All right, so in this video, we're gonna set up a short.io. I'm just gonna set up the free plan. And what this service does is it allows you to create short links using your own domain. So you can customize them and brand them with your own domain and have a whole bunch of fully branded short URLs. So let's jump in and get started. So here we are on the pricing page. You can see they have a couple of different options. I'm not gonna go through all of the settings here with you guys. We're just gonna start at the free basic plan. And as we grow, if we need to upgrade, you can always do that at another time. But for a lot of people, the free version is gonna be all you need. So let's just click this sign up button and get started. So the first step to creating an account is using your email address. You can uh, sign in with Google, Facebook, or Apple. Personally, I don't like to connect with these other services. You just become reliant on them. So I like to just use my own email. So I'm gonna not show you guys what my email is, but go ahead and just put this in and, uh, and then click create account. So we get to this page and this is actually pretty cool. They give us a couple of options here, which I wasn't expecting. So we can actually, if we're not ready to use our own domain name, they provide one for us. So here is going to be my uh, free domain for testing. And it does say their API and integrations are available with that. I don't know all of exactly what that means, but that's pretty cool that they let you just jump in and get started using the service if you want to see how it works without actually connecting your custom domain yet. And then they give you two more options here for your custom domain. They let you buy one, and it says it starts from $3 um, US per year with no extra fees. $3 for a domain name is really good. Um, usually the cheapest you can find them anywhere else is maybe $8 to $10. Sometimes they're 12, even upwards of 18. So $3 is a really good price. Um, I already have the domain that I wanna use, so I'm gonna use this third option, which is add your own domain. It does require some technical skills, but that's okay. I'll actually walk you guys through it. If you don't have the technical skills, um, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing here and that should help you out. So let's go ahead and click add my own domain. So here I've entered my own domain on the page here and there's two options to choose from. Either this is an empty uh, short domain just for links or this domain is uh, something you already use for a website or blog. So in my case, I'm actually setting up uh, a brand new domain that's just gonna be for these short links and that's it. So I'm gonna choose this first option. That's probably what I would recommend most people do is to have uh, your own domain that's just for this and not something that's combined with uh, another website that you're already using. So I would, I would recommend having a, a separate one. So I'm gonna use DaveWarfel.com for my domain and then I'm gonna have this as my short domain only. So I'm gonna keep it to this first option and we'll click add domain. So immediately we're presented with a little bit of a wizard here that's gonna looks like walk us through some of the features. So if we click through these arrows, it looks like it's gonna show us here, um, click to add a new domain. So you can add multiple domains if you want. So that's a way to do that. We go through, we can switch between domains. So down at the bottom, we'll see all of our domains listed there. I'm just gonna have the one, so we won't really need to do that. Now it's showing us how to um, copy a long URL and we paste it up in this box. That's the beginning process of creating a short URL for a much longer URL. Click to edit slug title, original URL, or apply some features. Um, this is interesting because it's kind of, I guess it just took me to this page. I don't know exactly how we got there, but that's okay. We'll, we'll figure that one out when we get there. And then uh, click to upgrade your subscription. Of course, um, you'll need to upgrade at some point, they hope. Um, and that's where you do it, up there in the corner. So that's the little wizard there. And as I suspected, we'll need to do a few things here. Uh, we need to verify our email address. That's gonna be um, when you sign up for a new account, they just wanna make sure you're a real human um, and, you're not, and you're using your own email, not somebody else's. So we need to do that. And then we need to configure the domain, which I expected. So this is probably the little bit of technical stuff that they were talking about that we'll need to do. In order to use our domain, there'll be a couple of things that we'll probably need to do with our DNS. Um, that we can look at here. But I'm gonna uh, pause this real quick, go uh, confirm my email, and then uh, we'll get started with configuring the domain. All right, and we're back, uh, confirm my email. One thing to note is when you do click on the button in your email to confirm your email address, they will ask you to create a password um, and save that to your account so that you can log in from there. So just be ready for that, create a nice secure password, and then you'll be all good to go. So now we need to configure the domain. Um, one cool thing that, that I just noticed is I clicked on this manual instructions first just to see, and it took me to a help article here. The help, artic help article specifically is for configuring a Google domain. Um, you can have your, you can buy your domain in a lot of different places. Uh, Google offers it, GoDaddy. Um, there's all kinds of different services out there where you can purchase a domain name. I'm, I'm interested if, if it knew that I had my domain at Google, 
which is totally possible. It's, it's public information, so you can see where people have registered domains. So that's pretty neat if they are um, specifically looking at where you bought your domain and sending you to the exact instructions. Because this instructions is specifically for Google domains. It walks you through with screenshots, which is really cool. So if you bought your domain somewhere else, I'm curious if this will actually show you a different help article that will go to your specific domain registrar, which is pretty neat. So let's, um, let's go here to configure and see if they walk us through that. Okay, so when you click configure, they're actually gonna send you, try to send you to your uh, DNS uh, management area. But I've got that open in another page, so I am just gonna use this help article because it explains exactly what we need to do. So I'm gonna go down to the part where um, it's got the two IP addresses that I need. And I'm just gonna copy both of those to my clipboard. And so here I am uh, in your list of Google domains here. You will click on the domain that you're gonna use and then um, I'll show you what to do next. Once you've clicked into the domain we wanna use, here is the domain I'm using. We click on DNS and we are going to manage our custom records. And we need to add an A record. So I already have an A record here um, and this is the IP address that's there for that A record. If you don't have one, then you would create a new record and you would choose type A here. But since I already have this one, I'm just going to um, edit it. So we'll put that first IP address there, or the second one technically, and then here is the other one that we need. So I'm gonna copy that. And we're gonna add more to this record and paste that second one. So we've got both, and actually let's, just to be on the safe side, I don't really think this matters, but we'll go ahead and put them in the order that they asked us to put them. And I believe we're gonna leave hostname blank. Uh, it does say add an at sign, but I think Google now, um, if you try to add an at sign, um, we'll, we'll go ahead and see if that works. Sometimes you just leave a blank, sometimes you put an at sign. So those are the only two things that you're gonna need. Um, you can disregard this, that was there from before. I'm gonna leave it, but I don't think it's necessary uh, to use short.io at all. All you need is these two IP addresses here and make it an A record and a host name. Um, leave TTL to whatever the, the default is. Um, a lower number usually means that the change will happen faster. A higher number means it might take a little bit longer for the change to take place. Um, that's just a basic idea of what TTL is, but you can just usually leave that at whatever the default is. If you're not using Google Domains and you're using something else, um, look through the documentation here and the domain setup guides. They might have um, a different article specifically for the registrar that you're using uh, wherever you're managing your DNS. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. Yep, and I was actually right. So it does uh, make you leave this empty instead of using an at sign. So go ahead and save. And there we see our two IP addresses are in there. It's an A record and it's for our main domain that we're gonna be using. So now let's come back to our control panel here. We need to find our domain settings here, which is up here at the top. So we click domain settings. It says inactive, and it says please point your DNS record to these two IPs, which we've done. So let's click refresh, and now we're active. Awesome. So main page redirect is not configured yet. It looks like um, you can do a main page uh, redirect right here, and then we'll also be able to add, um, obviously, all of our custom longer links and create a whole bunch of new short ones up here. But it looks like we can actually have a main one. So if somebody just goes to wharf.me, then we can send them somewhere. And then if they go to wharf.me slash whatever our short URLs is, that's where they'll go to all the other pages. So that's it for the setup for now. I will uh, try to do another video and I'll link to it from here um, if I can create another one on how to use the service.